Welcome to Unlocking the Power of Your Personality Type. I'm Samantha Mackay, lead trainer at Truity, and today we're talking about how INTJs can build a meaningful career. One of the challenges of being in the early stages of your career is the expectation that you will do a lot of the thankless grunt work without a greater sense of why that work matters. And that can be infuriating and demoralizing for any intuitive, but it can be especially challenging for an INTJ. They feel more than ready to redesign the inefficient systems of their organization from the moment they arrive, yet find themselves hitting against brick walls built with status quo and standard processes and need to know information loops and people who just can't see what they can. So how do you build a meaningful career when you feel like your wings are being clipped by the very organization you were there to help? I have four practices you can use every day to help you do that. Firstly, choose wisely. Pick your job or organization carefully. Choose a company that is not weighed down by excessive rules. Maybe something small and agile where it's easy to work beyond your job description. Solve the problems that need addressing and have your work be seen by the people who can grant you bigger projects and opportunities. Two, analyze the cost of perfection. INTJs have very high standards and it helps if they work for an organization that values excellence. However, excellence costs money and sometimes the cost of an INTJ's perfection is too high for a business to wear. Even at 80% an INTJ's work is still incredibly high value. So before starting to bring your vision or solution to life, reevaluate your definition of success for that project. What does 100% look like? 80%, even 50%? And then how does the business measure success and failure? What is the gap between yours and theirs? And analyze the cost benefit of that gap. Because in the fast moving business world, sometimes it is better to get something done than for it to be perfect. Three, practice giving and receiving feedback. It is very difficult to explain exactly what we've imagined to people. The moment we share our internal blueprints is the moment they change. It's important to remember this is part of the process of creating something that lasts. You have thought of something incredible, but you need people to help you bring it to life. And they will bring practical wisdom from the reality of implementing other projects. However, that feedback can feel like a personal attack instead of an objective analysis, like you have somehow failed to think of everything. But mostly that feedback isn't about you, it's about the project, but your ego takes it that way. So think about a way in which you would be comfortable receiving feedback. What would that system look like? Who would be involved? Where would this meeting take place? What framework or conditions would you place around that process? And then set up that situation, create that meeting, bring it to life and practice giving and receiving feedback with the group everyone will benefit and then you can incorporate that into your working life. Four, learn to delegate effectively. There is a difference between efficiency and effectiveness that is especially important when communicating with people. INTJs can be quick to find fault with others, become frustrated with other short-sightedness, inefficiency and low standards and yet every person has their strengths and their weaknesses. The key is learning how to best use the strengths of each person. Once they do that, INTJs can become very effective leaders. INTJs will expect others to work as independently as they do. So in order to set others up for success, it is important to paint a clear picture of what the completed task or project looks like, and then let the other person approach it how they like. In her book, Dead a Lead, Brené Brown talks about making sure everyone on the team has a clear understanding of what done looks like. Painting done, as Brené calls it, is not a one-way conversation or just talking about the task. It is a conversation around the why, the background, the underlying assumptions everyone is holding until everyone has a clear picture of the outcome. This process might seem inefficient in the short term, but it is effective for ensuring that in the long run, the work completed is the work that needs to get done. As Brene Brown says, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. And everyone enjoys doing work that matters and feeling confident they are playing to their strengths while doing it. 
So focus on working in an environment that supports you to play to your strengths and where over time you can help others to do the same.